tragic turn on the oncoming feud between pop star Katy Perry and a group of nuns trying to stop the singer from moving into their former convent. One of the sisters suddenly collapsed and died during a court hearing today. Katy Perry said she was going to close it. It was going to be... So what is the Perry Act? It stands for Protecting Elder Realty for Retirement Years Act, and it addresses the risks of elder financial abuse, especially as it relates to property and real estate transfers. Supporters of the act say that it would establish a 72-hour cooldown period during which either party involved in a contract for conveyance of a personal residence in which one party is over the age of 75 can rescind the agreement without penalty. Now, in order to understand the origins of the Perry Act. I've got a really entertaining story for you. Singer Katy Perry, whose real name is Catherine Elizabeth Hudson, daughter of two Christian pastors, describes her upbringing as sheltered, citing examples such as referring to deviled eggs as angeled eggs and not being permitted to eat lucky charms as, quote, luck was something that came from the devil. Despite her Christian background, in 2015, Katy found herself embroiled in a legal battle with the Los Angeles Archdiocese when she cut a deal to buy an 8.5 acre property for $14.5 million that had originally been gifted to the Order of Catholic Nuns known as the Sisters of the Immaculate Heart of Mary. A couple of resident nuns said that they were uncomfortable handing over their convent to the provocative singer whose hits include I Kissed a Girl and You're So Gay, stating that the sale violates our vows. According to the BBC, quote, Perry reportedly visited the nuns to win them over and is said to have shown them her tattoo of Jesus and sung a hymn for them. But the pair remained unconvinced. I found her videos, Sister Rita Callanan told the Los Angeles Times. I wasn't happy with any of it. The nuns opted instead to sell the estate to a local restaurant owner, Dana Hollister. Later, a jury concluded that the restaurateur had, quote, deliberately interfered with the purchase and Perry and the Catholic Church were awarded almost $10 million in damages in 2017 when their lawyers successfully argued that the sisters had no right to sell the property. The nuns had failed to get the consent of Archbishop Jose Gomez and the Vatican, which must approve the sale of any property worth over $7.5 million. Now, tragically, one of the nuns, Sister Catherine Rose Holzman, 89 years old, actually died during a court hearing. She was interviewed just hours earlier by a local Fox News affiliate saying, Katy Perry said she was going to close it. It was going to be her home. Dana was going to keep it open to the public, which Donahue wanted, and she would make a hotel. To Katy Perry, please stop. It's not doing anyone any good except hurting a lot of people. Fast forward to 2020 when the former American Idol judge found herself in yet another courtroom drama when Carl Westcott, founder of 1-800-Flowers, sued to rescind the offer to purchase his Monticello home, citing his mental incapacity. Westcott, 84, who was diagnosed with Huntington's disease in 2015, bought the property in May of 2020 for $11.25 million with the intention of living out his remaining years there. Then, in July of the same year, just a couple of months later, Westcott received an offer from Perry and her significant other, Orlando Bloom, for $15 million. Before signing the contract dated July 14th of 2020, Westcott underwent a six-hour surgery just days prior. Quote, the lawsuit claimed he was suffering from pain and post-surgical delirium from the surgery, dementia and or diminished mental cognitive functions from Huntington's, and he was under the influence of pain-killing opiates that his physicians instructed him to take. Now, the legal battle drug on three years, concluding in 2023, when the judge ruled in her favor. Perry's attorney told Rolling Stone, quote, Today's proposed decision is clear. The judge found that Mr. Westcott could not prove anything other than that he was perfectly sound of mind when he engaged in complex negotiations over several weeks with multiple parties to transact a lucrative sale of the property that netted him a substantial profit. Perry has since taken ownership of that estate. Now, just because the act is named in her ill-begotten honor, the Smurfs actress probably wasn't targeting these properties because their owners were elderly. It may have more to do with them having a lifetime to amass a large enough fortune 
decision to purchase these extravagant estates. There are, however, plenty of examples of contested real estate transactions involving elderly owners. Quote, the Federal Trade Commission also reported that in 2020, individuals aged 60 and older filed over 93,000 complaints related to fraud, with reported losses exceeding $500 million. Additionally, the rate of cognitive impairment and or dementia are 15% by 75 and 20% by age 80. Proponents of the Perry Act say these examples and others are proof of predatory acquisition, unfair dealing, or elder financial fraud. Now, the Perry Act has not gone through any legislative process, but it appears to have bipartisan support among legislators from across the nation. Now, we want to know your thoughts. Will a 72-hour cool-down period have any impact in protecting our seniors? Is 75 the right minimum age? Does Katy Perry still have a golden ticket when she gets to meet good old St. Peter? Let us know in the comments below and do us a favor, just because it's nice and it's nice to be nice. So subscribe and if you like the story, give it a share and we'll see you tomorrow.